Okay, David, we've got, I got your work up here, and it looks like you've got uh, all parts of your phase, different phases in the presentation. And at this point, I think that we can just jump right to phase three, the design development. Um, this is great. This is great. I mean, you've got everything here that you've started with, so you've got a complete package here. Um, I think it's really interesting. This is interesting right here, and I think you've got plenty of inspiration you're showing. You've got plenty of your sketches. So, so you really got a great arsenal here. Of, of visual um, inspiration. So that's fantastic. You got your logo iterations, and I think that we, we talked about a lot of these. Um, let's move into your final logo. And I, I, you know what, I just want to remind you that um, these are called, where do we go? These are called, um, these are called pictograms, not icons, they're called pictograms. So, and I think they're, they're good, I do. I think that they're, they're very good. They, they show, show some nice movement. I think it's very easy to see what the event is that you're depicting. Um, the one thing I would recommend is the curling. The curling is one of these things, it's like, okay, what doesn't fit in the group? And I think it's definitely the curling because it's the only one that doesn't feature the, the actual, um, well, actually ice hockey does as well, the actual figures. So ice hockey is easy to see because it, you know, they look like hockey sticks, but curling is a little difficult to, to kind of ascertain what that is. So I would recommend redoing the, the, um, the curling. Just try to get maybe get your figure in there so that we can see, you know, it's, so it looks like it fits more with the set, so to speak. Okay, let's go to your final logo here. Now, I, I think you're too complex. I, I really do. I think that you're in, in really in competition Every portion of this logo is competing with every other portion. And I, I think that you're, you're, you know, let me talk about that a little bit. All right. So the mark itself, I think, is, is interesting. I think it's very interesting. Um, I'm wondering, though, if you can't maybe take some liberties with the mark itself. And, and the reason I say that is because it's very, very long. And I'm wondering if, if shortening this is going to affect the communication at all. And I'm just wondering, if, if maybe even reducing the size of the whole logo. I would definitely recommend not using these gradients in the logo. One solid color. I would do this. I would recompose the mechanics of the logo as such. Instead of these giant rings, which are in direct competition with the mark, and then you've got Reykjavik, and then you've got 2022 in this bright red, which again is competing. So it's like this. It's like, look at me. No, look at me. No, look at me. No, look back at me. No, look at me. Instead of saying, okay, look at this. Then I want you to look here. Then I want you to look here. Okay, and that all has to do with scales. What I would recommend is this. I would say you take your mark, all right, and then take these rings and let's put these rings at the bottom and really reduce the size of those rings. They look like rings are recognizable all around the world. I mean, you're, nobody's going to mistake those for anything other than Olympic rings. I would take Reykjavik, all right, and I would use the Reykjavik right below the mark itself. So. Here's the mark, here's Reykjavik in this kind of scale, not quite so close to the mark, but maybe something like, well, not even that close, something like that. Okay, Reykjavik 2022. Reykjavik 2022. And then the rings below that. Okay, and that will really establish some nice hierarchy. So right now, this is just in too much competition with itself. The reverse uh, on, on color version, I think the adding of the strokes is really adding a lot of visual clutter, so to speak. Um, you don't want to stroke typefaces on reverse. In other words, you don't want to put a, and let me show you why. And at a distance, it's, they, they fall apart. And uh, it's, it's going to be a production nightmare as well, too. So stroke, you know, stroking letter forms, I think, is something that I always advise students not to stroke letter forms. <laughs> Um, and you'll hear a lot of designers agree with that. So that, and then another thing I want to bring to your attention is the mechanics is different from these two logos. So in other words, you've got this 2022 is a lot bigger compared to Reykjavik than this 2022. So got to get some consistency in there. Let's move on, see where we're at. Pictograms, uh, final pictograms. Uh, this is interesting, but this is more interesting. I think this pattern background is really cool. Um, it definitely says freezing ice, snow type thing. So that, that's pretty cool there. Uh, let's move into some of the, um, okay, so this I think is interesting. I think that, that you having this main background is, is kind of an interesting choice. Um, I, honestly, I think you're, you're a very aggressive designer, which is okay. It's okay. But in a way, I think that a lot of 
areas here, you're, you're really, really sacrificing a lot of things. And I think that being aggressive as a designer is fine as long as you keep a grip on, on hierarchy. Let me show you an example. In this ticket right here, where do you want the viewer to look first? And I'm having trouble deciding where to look first because you've got this, you've got the pattern in the background, you've got the logo, you've got the, 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 the um, uh, pictogram, you've got the type, and it's, I just, it's all in competition with it itself. So there's just so much going on here that I think it's a little difficult to, to ascertain the hierarchy. Um, in the back, I think this pattern right here is very, very interesting. And I, I would like to see it move with this pattern and kind of maybe some variations of this pattern and not so much of these, these images that you've used. Um, these images are going to be a problem. As we know, um, you know, for reproduction and trying to resize these, the images are going to be a little bit of an issue. Um, so I would rather see you create your supporting graphics using... Uh, some pattern backgrounds, slight patterns, nothing real aggressive like this, though. I'm going to show you some examples in a second. And, and I think that, that other than that, I think the package is coming along beautifully. But I would recommend those, those, uh, those uh, comments. Um, let me show you some examples. All right, uh, let me see here. Here's a great example of pattern, use of pattern. So you've got this, this logo. And, and this is Reykjavik, too. Oh, yeah. So you've got the logo, and then you've got these recurring patterns that are being used in a lot of different areas. And it's, it's, it's like a secondary, it's like a fifth element. So you've got these secondary patterns, so you're not just placing the logo and, and, um, and using various colors. But you've got this recurring semicircle here with these patterns that you see over and over. So it's really creating this consistent visual language, a.k.a. this fifth element, other than just placing the logo, okay? So I think that's really super effective. Note there's a lot of different variations of the logo and different placements, and, and, um, and everything is really super simple. Let's take a look at the logo itself. So you have Reykjavik 2022. You got the rings, which I, I think the rings are a little large for the logo, but nonetheless, you still have this really super clear hierarchy, okay? It's very clear that this designer wants you to look at the logo first. And then, and this is where I think that the rings could be smaller. Logo, the name, location, then the rings. And you can see that over and over in different placement. The logo, Reykjavik, the rings. Even in the, the horizontal version, you still have this really nice, clear hierarchy. And I think that that's something that I think that, that your, your uh, work right now is lacking hierarchy. Let me show you another example. Here's some more different kind of... Um, examples of, of how you can use patterns and recurring themes with and really keep the hierarchy clear. Okay, and then I, you know, I want to show you something. I'm gonna Brian, I'm, I'm using Brian's example because I think he's done something really super interesting, and that is this right here. What he's done is he's developed these, these patterns based on some of his inspirational images and he's created these patterns. So these patterns could be used all over, not unlike the Vancouver Olympics, where you have these different kind of background patterns that are creating this wonderful fifth element. Do you see what I'm saying? So we don't, so you know, notice how everything is very clear, very simple, and, and very oriented to hierarchy. So there's no visual clutter. It's all very, very clear. And I think that that's something I think we could, we could work on in your, your work, because I think that right now, I think that they're, they're, they're very, very mm, busy, very busy. Everything is very busy, almost aggressive in nature, especially this ticket right here. I think this is like really, really aggressive. So um, other than that, I think you're doing really fantastic stuff. T-shirts look great. A lot, of, a lot of stuff looks really fantastic. Um, but those would be my recommendations moving forward. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or other, please let me know. I'll be glad to clarify. Okay. Thanks, David.